Welcome everyone to our August PL Andres All Hands. We're going to spend our, our first main chunk of time on working group update, and then we have a deep dive into Thunderdome with Tommy and Ian uh, from the NetOps team. So excited to learn more about that. As a reminder, the Andres Working Group is part of the Protocol Labs network, where we drive breakthroughs in computing technology to push humanity forward. Um, we're constantly building lots of amazing projects and contributing to these open source ecosystems, especially around IPFS, Lip2P, and Filecoin. But also, there's a ton of great updates from some of the other projects we contribute to in this month's All Hands as well. Our mission is to scale and unlock new opportunities for IPFS, Filecoin, and Lip2P. We do that in a number of ways, especially by um, participating closely with a whole network of developers and contributors across the world, um, driving breakthroughs in protocol utility and capability, um, and also just doing our work in the open and accessibly so many others can learn from the work we're doing and can collaborate with us effectively. These are the different working groups that make up the PLN Trez working group, I guess teams in this working group, um, and all of them are growing and hiring. So if you want to come and join us, we are hiring for a number of open roles, especially engineering managers, TPMs, product managers, and infra engineers. So um, I mean, tons of others as well, but please come and join us if all of the projects we're working on sound cool and interesting and you'd like to help make them a reality. Our strategy for this year stays the same, focused first and foremost on helping ramp amazing new developers and contributors into these ecosystems and doing our work in highly collaborative ways, focusing on robust storage and retrieval across IPFS and Filecoin, helping people use these decentralized storage networks and um, access their data in highly retrievable, useful ways. Um, and then we have a number of really exciting breakthroughs that are in the works across a number of different groups. We have some exciting test nets coming up in Q4 um, and a lot of uh, other projects uh, to be shared. We'll talk more about that in a second. And of course, what underpins all of the work we do is actually helping these open source distributed networks operate and run smoothly um, and making sure that you know new releases are being put out for some of the libraries we maintain. Um, and that as we uh, kind of improve these tools, we reduce operational debt, tech debt, um, and make them better for everyone to utilize. Here are our objectives for Q3. Um, we're doing a really great job on helping more people contribute to this space, which is great. We've grown ourselves as a working group, and we're also helping many other teams um, grow, collaborate, uh, harness each other's output. Um, our goal around delivering robust, accessible storage and retrieval, we're kind of orange on this. We are not currently on track to hit our five petabytes of fill plus data being onboarded to the network per day goal. Um, we're, I think we're at like 1.2 or something petabytes per day. Um, and while the retrieval markets work is doing a ton of retrievals, they're mostly um, mirrored traffic. And so we really need to get that out into the open and have that be um, kind of like real traffic that is hitting storage providers and um, actually making, uh, making sure people are using all of the data that's stored in Filecoin. Um, our goal around breakthroughs has gone from orange to yellow, which is really good. Um, we now have a live FEM testnet that people are running nodes on. I think there's plans to have that be the uh, have the EVM actor deployed to that shortly, if it isn't already, um, which is super exciting. So go check out Wallaby if you're interested in the Falcon virtual machine. Um, and then there's an exciting launch that will be spotlighted shortly around time lock encryption, which is one of the exciting breakthroughs that we've been pushing on. There's a ton uh, more that could be pushed on and gain real world adoption this quarter, next quarter. Um, and so uh, kind of additional work to do here to get this fully green, um, but it's on a good trajectory, which is really nice. Um, and then of course, doing a really great job. NetOps team has made some really good improvements to um, gateway uh, retrieval speeds, which is fantastic. Um, and good uptimes and good, uh, you know, mitigation of, of any proactive uh, kind of issue identification and solving um, going into making this, uh, you know, keeping these networks running super smoothly and some really awesome new protocol implementations, especially in IPFS land uh, coming out of the IPFS thing. Um, so all of this going pretty well, some, some areas to continue working on, but making progress. Um, and I'll hand it off to Adine for IPFS. Yeah, so so I profess we're trying to make the web work peer peer, doing it with content addressing. Okay, so some of the uh, indicators that we're tracking um, in terms of performance and, and number of nodes, things are sort of uh, continuing continuing as they were. Nodes are growing, speeds are saying are staying similar. We've been tracking the ongoing amount of of spec uh, of PRs as well. We've added uh, a new metric for tracking the spec PRs separately from the code ones. 
code ones have grown a little bit. Uh, some of this is, or a, a large chunk of the, the extra PRs are a function of unified CI, which you'll be hearing a little bit more about uh, later uh, this call. And also just sort of catching up on some triage uh, that needs to happen post the, the IPFS thing event and uh, some of the things coming from that. So what's been going on? There is a Kubo 0.15 uh, release candidate. Um, the big items in there are support for Blake 3, which has been pushed by, by Claudia, uh, who's a former Entras uh, folk. So this has been, been really great to see. There have been some, some plugins added by Gus for configuring Kubo, uh, sort of however you need to, so you can really get into the guts if you want to without having to go and fork the code base. Uh, and we have some good stuff to separate out uh, the BitSwap client and server pieces uh, to make it easier to iterate on them going forward uh, as we see sort of more use and more implementations. There's been a lot of work going on coming out of the IPFS thing event in terms of uh, projects like IPVM um, and uh, the WNFS working group and things like that that we've been uh, we've been engaging in. Um, and we're sort of excited to see how the community is propelling this uh, forwards and how we can how we can be of use. We have some work going on with Reframe to try uh, and make it more more usable and accessible to folks, uh, as well as to integrate it with the IPFS.io gateway, so we don't have to go through the hydras uh, in order to hit the indexers. Related to sort of the the Kubo renaming stuff, uh, stuff we are separating out the Kubo RPC client written in JavaScript from the rest of the JavaScript stack. And Steve will be talking about uh, some events that are going to be happening planned for Q4. Right. Next up awesome. for the, yeah. Over to the LibP2P team. Hey, folks. Uh, I'm Marco from the LibP2P team. Uh, LibP2P is the networking library for peer-to-peer -peer applications in Web3. Some highlights from last time. We've had uh, our last community call this week. We had over 11 folks join it. Um, we're planning a LibP2P day during our PLN lab week. Across implementations, we have a doc about DOS mitigation on the libp2p docs page, continuing work on WebRTC. And for now, each implementation specifically, we released a new version of golibp2p, which is makes it a uh, mono repo. So we've merged golibp2p core into the golibp2p repo. Default keys are now ed25519. Um, and golibp2p does cross-version tests now via TestGround. Rust LibPP also released a new version, which simplifies network behavior events. And we have progress here with NIM, uh, with auto NAT server protocol and continuing work on discovery interface and rendezvous. And that's it for LibPP. Awesome. Um, I think we have an update, a video update from Rod for IPLD, which is the kind of content addressing data model of Web3. IPLD highlights. We have a few for you today. I've got a Go IPLD Prime release 0180. This is mainly by node focused with some custom type converters and a registry to reduce boilerplate. Uh, if you're using by node at all, grab this great updates. In JavaScript, there's an IPLD schema package that is a combination of some existing packages that have been updated and supercharged or IPLD schema parsing and printing, and it'll make these object validators and converters for your schemas. So you can take a schema and an object and you can validate and convert according to that and then do the reverse as well. Uh, a heads up, there was a GoCar security advisory last month. If you're consuming cars from untrusted sources, then you should update your dependency. There is some changes happening in the DAG PB spec to note some obscure edge cases with regard to unsorted links. Head there if you're interested in the weeds. Uh, coming soon, there are discussions underway around a, a possible CID v2. Um, there is a developing spec for IPLD and gateways happening over in the specs repo of IPFS. Uh, IPLD and WASM, we have a tracking issue for that, noting all of the activity that is happening in WASM land as it relates to IPLD. We'll try and collect it there. There will be a new release of JS multiformats soon that is introducing a CID interface for TypeScript rather than just the concrete type. Um, and there's some ongoing work with regard to selectors and traversals, specifically for GoCar, but likely also with regard to just the traversals for common cases. Um, and a reminder, there is a, a sync every two weeks for anyone interested in IPLD. Join via Zoom or live on YouTube, link in GitHub. Then that's it. Awesome. Thank you so much, Rod. Over to Peter for IPDX. Ooh, yeah, I'll try to go only once. 
Uh, so for the developer experience team, uh, we just released Unified CI uh, this week. The big thing coming out there is Go119 upgrade. More on that a bit later in the spotlight section. In test confounds, there's quite a lot happening. Uh, Rust cross-version testing is ready and implemented. And we also designed the feature of remote runners. And there is a link to the design there if you're interested, to, interested in that. And on GitHub management side, uh, the videos from uh, IPFS Pink are out. So there is a great introductory video to GitHub management. Uh, out on YouTube. What's next? Uh, User-defined config invariants are coming out for GitHub management uh, later this month. And in test ground plans, uh, we are preparing to release uh, Rust and Go cross language testing. And we are going to be prioritizing any stability work uh, around test grants coming forward. As always, uh, we are hosting office hours every Monday. So feel free to drop in. Awesome. And over to Jennifer for Filecoin. Uh, Filecoin, uh, we are a crypto-powered <laughs> distributed storage network. Uh, that's for humanity most important information. Here are some of our like matrix, the network total capacity, the rollback power is still around 16.89 XB bytes, and the network growth is slowing down a little bit, but I don't want to worry that too much because we have plenty of space for a lot of good information to be stored. On that note, the data onboarding is not slowing down at all. As you can see, the whole trend is going up. We are now at 154 PBB useful verified, like uh, useful data on top of the Filecoin network. The data set is still on, on the screen, as you can see, but I do want to call out the daily max in the past month. Uh, there's one day we onboarded 1.52 uh, PBB of data which is quite amazing in my opinion. For the Filecoin uh, highlights, we're going to go a little, a little bit different style this time. So here is the uh, high level core improvement like roadmap. We are around Q2, uh, Q3. So after shipping FEM M1, we're working on the next network upgrade. It's about programmability, uh, storage actors to do some refactory on that. Then FEM team is heading down, working out FEVM and the test that is coming up. I will share more details later. There's a lot of effort on data on board boarding, preservation, and other things, as you can see. <laughs> in November, we're having an V17 upgrade, and there are two most like heated FIP being discussed right now. Uh, go ahead, take a look. This first one, FIP36, is about to adding a new multiplier according to the sector duration so that we can have longer commitment storage to the network. We also have FIP45, which is the couple file queen plus from the built-in actor so that more user programmable mar markets can be built uh, with if we FEVM uh, using verified uh, data cap. Uh, we are also introducing our very first token contract. We are making data cap a token of our coin network, which is super exciting. FEVM. And if you haven't seen the updated timeline, we're targeting a network upgrade for Filecoin uh, around February 2023. Uh, right now, we have an amazing project and developer experience working group being formed uh, for FEVM team. They are currently doing on site in Denmark. Uh, we are trying to build a lot of developers to build on top of Filecoin. We do have a test net called Wallaby Live already, so you can develop uh, Wasm and Solidity contract on top of that network already. Join the public Slack channel on Filecoin if you are interested in that. We are also um, target to launch an incentivized testnet to bring more developers into the network in Q4, so that as soon as the FEVM goes live, we have a lot of use cases can be on lockdown Filecoin already. We will be hearing more from the Bedrock team, but they are focused on faster onboarding, more reliable retrieval, and maybe bringing some IPFS to Filecoin by enabling BizSwap in Boost, which is super exciting. And the Lotus team uh, leading by Magic and collaborating with a uh, storage provider working group. We are trying to work with Cilia as a service, uh, service providers to lock down the design on how to enable Lotus Magner to work with the city as a service so that uh, more people can join in the Falcon network and pro um, provide storage. If you have any uh, advice, uh, go join the discussion. Um, that's pretty much it. Awesome. Lots of great things upcoming. Um, now for a couple of selected team updates, starting with NetOps. Jesse. 
Uh, the day for the net ops, uh, first, um, our first speed deliver is drop from believe, three second to 1.3 second is a huge improvement. Uh, this is, uh, you can see the chart. Uh, <laughs> we keep improve our infrastructure to make sure people can getting their data as fast as possible. Uh, it's great uh, improvement and upgrade achievement in there. Um, our IPFS cluster is still uh, getting a lot of pain, a lot of upload. It is a good thing, uh, but we also are looking into any people in the community willing to run IPFS cluster with us. So we will have a very good uh, guidance and uh, uh, end to end, a step by step uh, like document for you, so we can run the whole network better. Um, the weekly IPFS um, gateway request, you can see the number itself. Last week, a little bit. Uh, we still try to figure out what's going on there because the, num the number is back up uh, this week again. Uh, we suspect it's because the uh, infra, uh, the infra, infra, the company who also run in the gateway, uh, it is decommission hoping the community will start running the gateway to make our gateway more decentralized i think this is a good move uh, but the short term or uh, short term is kind of a effect uh, it may be getting more centralized requests into our gateway or maybe some of the traffic is um, redirect from uh, this uh, infra uh, endpoint so get into a little bit uh, but we, we, we see data already backing up again um, also uh, i think this is a very good opportunity uh, to make sure um, the community aware what we try to do in here is not trying to get in all the requests go to our gateway. It is helping the community. Anyone want to run the gateway, please reach out to us. We will help um, you to help the whole network to run a very good gateway and provide the best service uh, for the whole network. Um, it's the same situation for the uh, the unit uh, that is gateway user a week. We still pretty good number. Uh, it's a little bit uh, this week is because because the traffic getting less, but it will come back uh, next week. And that's pretty much from the KPI point of view for the ops. Awesome. And Corey for fill in for updates. Hello. Uh, we've been uh, spending a lot of effort uh, trying to get our uh, our own infrastructure onto uh, GitOps. GitOps is a, a force multiplier for us that helps us do things a lot a lot faster. Uh, the update is here is that uh, if uh, is that bootstrappers and all the critical infrastructure is running uh, using this methodology. So if you have bootstrapped a, a, a Lotus node lately, uh, you have used our uh, new installations. We are starting to work on a more generic uh, cluster that uh, other other teams at uh, Protocol Labs uh, in the PLN can uh, utilize. So uh, included in that is uh, applications such as the IPFS operator. Uh, those are available and uh you can you can make use of, use of it using uh the uh our GitOps infrastructure uh the chain snapshot uh service has had a soft launch uh so uh, if you're interested in that please go have a look at the landing page uh api.chainlove this is a service that we run that uh has a, a lightweight uh lotus api uh we had no downtime since the last update uh and uh 1.7 uh, thousand unique users uh, this is up slightly, but it's uh, roughly the same as uh, the, as the last update. So going going steady there. If you are a Lotus user, uh, you might have uh, noticed that there has been some improvements in the homebrew installation. Uh, so this is all thanks to uh, Ian Davis, uh, who's uh, with uh, My Mycelio. Um, he's uh, done some great work to make sure that the uh, Mac OS uh, universal binaries works. Uh, opportunities, what's coming next? Uh, we're continuing to onboard more things onto our uh, Weave infrastructure. Uh, there's a list there of uh, the projects that are uh, being focused on currently. We are experimenting with uh, a, a new uh, front door uh, concept. Uh, so in the past, if, you, if you've uh, had any questions about infrastructure and didn't know where to go, uh, now you can uh, talk to us in Slack. We have a uh, more thorough, more well thought out process for handling uh, requests. I'll end with that. If uh, if you have a project uh, and you need some place to run it, uh, please let us know. If you would like to help us test the snapshots, uh, we are very interested in uh, allowing that, making that happen. Uh, so uh, reach out to us. Thanks. Awesome. Corey, is there a specific Slack channel that people can go to for that front door? Uh, right now, just go, uh, go to uh, NetOps Issues in uh, in uh, Filecoin Slack. Cool. NetOps Issues. You heard it here.
on to Bedrock Update. Jacob. Hello. Uh, yeah, so Bedrock heavily focused on improving storage uh, onboarding support and, and really focusing over the next month uh, on uh, reliable retrievals. And so on the storage onboarding side of things, one of the things that we shipped recently in uh, 1.4 RC of Boost is the ability to support calculating comp P for deal uh, storage on the remote, on the ceiling workers. And so this is a big improvement in terms of being able to improve the onboarding rate, removing a bottleneck on the boost node in the markets process. And so that actually enables minor or storage providers to be able to scale their uh, data onboarding pipeline. So we've already had a couple SPs who benefited from this uh, by early adoption. So nice wins there. Um, we're also working on rolling out a HB full piece retrieval um, to storage providers in the Evergreen program, which is make it much easier for them to download full pieces for replication of all this like slingshot data uh, that's been uh, on the network since launch and try to make that uh, a lot faster. Um, we are on the retrieval side of things. We're working on, uh, we've had some in issues on CID.contact with index ingestion because we've been scaling so much data and onboarding so much data to the network um, that we're, we're working on scaling that up. And so we've rolled out index star, which is a network splitter, which is enabling us to uh, spread traffic out across uh, multiple index providers. We have six now, uh, six people running indexers on the network. Uh, including us, which is really, really great to scale that up. Um, and then on the, the, as Jennifer mentioned earlier, so bit swap and boost is one of the big things that we're looking at landing by Phil Lisbon. And what this is going to enable us to do is have IPFS gateways retrieving directly from storage providers. So this will be a really big win for interoperability on the network. Uh, we're targeting having uh, a good chunk of that work done in the next month and doing a lot of testing later on. Um, so hopefully we'll have, have that all in place. Um, by the end of October. Awesome, love the graphs. Um, Jennifer, for the new docs working group. For the longest time, we do have a docs team, but serving all the Andreas docs needs, but nobody really know who we are. So we are revamping a new docs team is like kind of, you know, reborn. Our goal is to make it easy for all the users and developers to learn, build and use Filecoin, IPFS and LibP2P and also any other like stack PL is building. And we obviously want to become very active participants within all the interplanetary community we're building. Uh, we do have more team members joining in the team, Johnny Matthew, you all know them, and we have Danny focus on the P2P, Timo focus on like IPFS. Uh, we have John M has been uh, helping with keep the dog side like running um, pro, uh, efficiently. And we are collaborating with Autopro Dev Rouse and Lotus TSC very closely on this uh, documentation needs. Uh, there, we are making a couple of changes within our team. So we're dividing our focus into two tracks. The Android side of the docs team, uh, we are going to try to focus on the engineering product. So basically we want to create the source of the truth of the tech that we're building um, by creating document uh, technical documentations, user guides, and developer guides, and tutorial, and et cetera. However, we also want to focus on the users, just like what does user want to know about our tech so that they can use and build on top of the tech. We, are, we will be working very closely with the auto core and developer relationships, also feel that PSEs and the FVM DX team and to uh, bring that uh, effort up. So we are still like working on our roadmap. Our team is still quite new, uh, but uh, the first priority is like we're documenting everything that how we do docs. So basically, if you go to our upcoming Notion page and you're curious about how to speed up your docs, you can find some resources over there. We want to be user, 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 user focused. So we're adding a lot of analytics text to our doc site. All these pages are already public. You feel free to go explore. And we're considering adding comment section to our documentation so we know the content we're creating is what our users are looking for so that we can improve our documentation for them more in the future. And then working on FVM developer docs with the FVM team. Uh, we're keep on track, we're keeping track of the Kubo new release and see if there's any user and documentation needed. We are doing a lib P2P docs uh, implementation audit and concepts audit, and hopefully revamp the whole docs uh, later this year. There's more coming where to find us. We do have a PL docs channel that in Filecoin Slack, if you want to join and hang out with us, just let me know. Uh, 
always feedback or issues will come in the DOCSI GitHub rep repositories, and we have public channels for the DOCS effort uh, in Falcon Slack uh, for all the stack. Uh, and I will be sharing Notion maybe in our next all hand. Awesome. Thank you for the update. Now over to a couple of spotlights on exciting work um, shipped and upcoming, starting with time lock encryption. Patrick. Hello, everybody. I'm Patrick from the DRAN team. For those of you who don't know, DRAN is a network for generating publicly verifiable, unpredictable, unbiasable random numbers. Uh, we recently implemented a practical implementation of time lock encryption uh, that does not use proof of work. Time lock encryption is the ability to encrypt something now that cannot be decrypted until some point in the future. Uh, it's got some cool use cases like a dead man switch, MEV prevention in blockchain systems, anonymous auctions, uh, and many, many more. Concrete things we shipped recently are a time lock library in Goline. Uh, and a time lock library in TypeScript. Uh, we also developed a demo website for encrypting vulnerability reports called Time Vault. Uh, all these were released and discussed at DEF CON in Las Vegas two weeks ago. Um, additionally, we've written a Notion page about our scheme for people who want to get into the weeds, um, as Rob said earlier. Uh, additionally, we're releasing a blog post in the next two weeks that's so going to detail how it's going to work and hopefully uh, get the community involved a bit more. Also coming up, we're going to make a Rust compatible library for Time Lock as well. And yeah, watch out for that. Feel free to join us on our Slack or on our Notion page and give us feedback. Thanks. Super cool. Users here need it. So if this solves a scratches an issue you're trying to solve, come come get involved in the Slack channel and, and start actually using this in prime time. Over to Peter for Unified CI. Oh yeah, me again. <laughs> Hi, so yeah, the main thing we did this week uh, on the developer experience side was to release new version of Unified CI, uh, mainly targeted at uh, Go users here. But maybe first let's start with what Unified CI is. So it's a set of uh, GitHub action workflows um, define how to test and release our code, currently supported for Go and JS that we distribute to participating repositories. Uh, if you want to participate, it's as easy as uh, creating a single PR to protocol.github uh, repo uh, that has a name of the repo you're interested in adding back to release. Uh, so in the, the most recent release, uh, the, the main thing that's new is uh, Go 119 support. And we dropped Go 117 support from our Go workflows. Uh, which means that all participating repositories are free to use generics now, uh, which is the most exciting thing. And the other cool thing that's, that's new in Unified CI land is that from now on, whenever we detect a new repository uh, that uses Go uh, in, in our organizations, we're going to automatically suggest adding Unified CI there. One more thing, <laughs> if your if your update <clears throat> the update in your repository of Unified CI doesn't uh, get merged automatically, it might be for for various reasons. Uh, most most of the time, it comes down to upgrading some dependencies. But if you're stuck at, and if you want some some help with getting the upgrade through, please uh, reach out to us at IPDX uh, in Filecoin Slack. That's all I had. Thank you. Awesome helping everyone merge and, and check their PRs quickly. Super useful, makes for a great developer experience. Over to Steve for IPFS gatherings. Yeah, so after a hiatus, it's time to re-energize the IPFS community with IPFS camp. It is happening in Portugal uh, in late October around the whole lab week time. So this is kind of building on a momentum of a series of great IPFS related milestones and announcements that happened in 2022, as we've kind of focused Shifted focus from our reference implementations to having many implementations, the relaunch of the specs process, you know, more developer and user tooling, um, the partnership to get IPFS into space, major commitments to IPFS funding and IPFS hiring, and of course, the successful event back in uh, July with IPFS thing. So there's been a lot there, and we want IPFS Camp 2022 to carry on with that. Um, and really set us up for more growth and adoption here in 2023. So there is a standing website right now. More details will be posted there soon. Um, we look forward to seeing and having many of you present at it. Um, in terms of if you want to, if you're gung ho for camp and ready to prepare, um, there are a lot, all the videos from IPFS thing are now live. Um, you can find them on the YouTube channel. 
or if you want links to all the playlists, if you go to the uh, recap blog post that's on the IPFS blog, you'll also find them there. So anyway, looking forward to seeing many of you all here at this event soon. Good times. Woot woot. Definitely watch the videos. They're fantastic. And now on to our deep dive on Thunderdome. Take it away, Tommy. Thanks very much. So yeah, we called the project Thunderdome um, after the 1985 film. Uh, I won't t talk too much about the film. Uh, I just have to say that the shoulder pads are probably an example of why you shouldn't uh, project current growth rates too far into the future. Um, so we're currently targeting the uh, IPFS uh, gateway use case. Uh, so we do this by spinning up uh, so-called targets and uh, firing traffic at them and make sure it's exactly the same traffic. Um, we gather as much information as we can when we do that. So we get metrics uh, via Prometheus. The newly enabled uh, tracing in uh, Kubo, we scrape all that up if it's there. We grab logs and it, we all, we're all we pushing everything to uh, hosted infra so we don't have to do any work to uh, keep up with the number of experiments. I've said no limit to how many experiments we have. A couple of lines of config to to uh, define them. Uh, next slide, please. Oh, I should say it's me and Ian in the uh, production engineering team that have uh, been working on this in the last couple of weeks. So yeah, we the first thing we did was make a tool called uh, Deal Good, named after uh, a character in the film who organizes fights. Uh, uh, I tried to resist talking about the film, but yeah, they make people fight in a hemisphere in the middle of the desert in a uh, post-apocalyptic future. So uh, make of that what you will. So yeah, multiple targets, same load, like I said. You can, we, we can run it headless uh, or in it with a terminal UI. Uh, so it's useful for local dev, dev actually. It's also got tracing enabled. We do tracing propagation. So you can say uh, this request and then trace it all the way through. From the point of view of the client, as instrumented as the Go uh, HTTP lib is, we, we trace all that and then we can correlate it with Kubo's tracing. Also exports Prometheus metrics and we can play back production load uh, from a uh, a log stream that we take uh, from the production uh, gateways, which is minimally service impacting because it's just another uh, Nginx log file that's being written or from a randomly canned, uh, randomly from a canned list of URIs. Uh, and there's the terminal UI there. It looks delightful as it as it moves. Uh, Ian's got an ASCII uh, cinema uh, demo that he published a week or two ago. Yeah, so that's what it looks like to define an experiment. At the moment, we're limited to give us a couple of, uh, or not couple, give us uh, N uh, Docker images and whatever environment variables you want to set with them, and we'll run the experiment for you. And we automatically, on the left there is all of the tracing stuff. That's not any work we've done. That's just what Grafana Tempo looks like. And that's all the default tracing in, in Go IPFS that's there now. There's a, I think there's a big seam of work in, in Kubo to, to instrument more and more things and become more and more useful. One of our first experiments is actually measuring how uh, much enabling the tracing, you know, what fraction of tracing you enable, uh, how much does that impact performance? Uh, on the right there is a still from the demo video I'm about to play. Uh, and you can see the dashboard is automatically generated. So dashboards for free. And then you've got a one minute, 45 second video to play. Yes, that should start building things. Makes a uh, ECS service for each of the backends, the targets rather, and um, deal good. So we should start seeing stuff appear here. And yeah, there we do. Peer and peer and demo deal good. Peer and demo peer and demo without. Peer and demo demo with. Um, so we should be able to go to our automated dashboard. We go to peer in demo. Uh, it might be a little while. It takes a minute or two for the uh, containers to start, as you can imagine, using uh, Fargate at the moment. So it's got a like a sign-in network interface in the VPC and that kind of stuff. But very soon, we should start seeing some things. Yeah, so there's a little bit coming through there. That's the wave is reported. And um, that should refresh every five seconds. I'll full screen this now because there's nothing else to see really. Starting to get some data through already. Uh, times of first byte is kind of the most critical uh, metric in terms of the user perception of the service and stuff. So we kind of centered that in this default dashboard. So we're saying that WIV is about twice as fast. So when you're peering, it's about twice as fast in the initial startup here zero to experiment in n time units um we'll develop this dashboard further with a, a whole bunch of default metrics and stuff
My wife was saying that she wishes she could uh, fast forward me and mute me in real life. Um, uh, so yeah, we've already got on the backlog a bunch of experiments. We want your experiments though. So like what's interesting to you? What would you, what battles would you like to create? So yeah, send, send us your suggestions. Uh, we want to get as many experiments going. The thing's only as useful as uh, the experiments we run. Uh, Mario's asked the question, where does it get the traffic from? It's replaying uh, a trace log. Uh, you approved the PR a little while ago, mate. So various levels of soon, coming soon, more uh, production uh, like. So at the moment, we're saying that a Docker image plus uh, environment variables constitutes a, a different target. But of course, other things affect how well the infrastructure runs. What kind of disks are you giving them? What file system you're choosing? Are you raiding it? We want we want to finesse the UX so it's an absolute delight. We want to automatically, if you've got a performance enhancing branch, just track it, just keep deploying the branch, test for regressions, et cetera. RCs automatically should be tested. I shouldn't read the comments. Mario's making me laugh. Uh, continuous uh, Kubo JS IPFS IRA shootout. Uh, bring your own hardware. So like if you don't like our uh, hardware options, run it yourself. Point it at something you're interested in. Run our sidecars, get graphs automatically. And then one thing I'm a bit mega, mega excited about is the idea of like infrastructure experiments. So which load balancing strategies should we adopt? How, you know, what kind of machine sizes might we use? Can we compare this infra infrastructure provider with this other one? What if we use a shared block store? What if all the nodes in a region had a peer store in Redis? Things like things above the level of individual instances of, of, of our software that do impact the, uh, the, the performance of it. Uh, because because Kubo and 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 the, you know anything implementing the IPFS gateway spec actually uh, are deliberately designed to interact well with uh, load balances, caches, that kind of thing. So we want to be able to like test them as well because that that is the the aggregate of all those things is our uh, performance. Uh, so that's it. That's all for me. Thanks for your indulgence. Uh, that was a pleasure. Awesome. Then we'll end our meeting there. And everyone have a wonderful rest of your Thursday.